What's up, comic and pop culture fans? This is James with Mint Hunter Comics, and today I'm going to give you my personal top 10 comic characters that only appeared once. These are characters that were basically in a mini series or storyline, or in some cases, literally just one issue, and then we just never saw them again. There's some pretty good ones in here that I think you might be surprised that they only appeared that one time. There's tons of examples out there though, so why don't you drop one of your favorites down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm gonna start the list off with an Azrael villain. Yes, I know that's bold, but actually it's a Jean-Paul Valley when he was Batman villain. This guy's name was Avatar and he was a serial killer. I love this era of Batman comics as you never knew what was going to come next. Avatar was a madman serial killer who really stretched DC Comics to their limit in what they could put in a book for kids. Our new Batman actually indirectly kills him or allows him to fall to his death without saving him, which was used to show us firsthand the difference between Jean Paul and Bruce. That being said, Avatar was so awful and so nasty that instead of feeling afraid of the new Batman like we were supposed to, I think we were all just relieved. And he has not come back. Next, we have the Anarchist, not to be confused with Anarchy. This is a Green Lantern and Justice League villain from the 70s. And this dude actually learns how to tap into the yellow-based impurity that exists in Green Lantern rings, mainly Hal Jordan's ring. By doing this, he's able to draw power from the ring into himself and use it to heal the sick so he could basically appear as the new messiah. His goal, however, was to use this to become a dictator with his yellow power, so the JLA had to get creative on how to stop him. Hal tried draining his power battery, but that didn't work. Ultimately, the JLA deduced the connection between Anarchist and the power ring energy of Green Lantern, and they basically KO'd Green Lantern so that he wouldn't be conscious enough to recharge his lantern, which gave the Anarchist powers. In the end of the issue, Green Lantern was able to put a psychic block in Anarchist's mind to prevent him from tapping into the power ring's energy ever again. Pretty notable one-time villain that only existed in this one ever issue. Our third example is going to be Spider-Man. Yes, you heard me right. That is not with the hyphen. It's just Spider-Man. Long before Spider-Man made his Marvel Comics debut, a villain named Spider-Man faced off against Shazam, Captain Marvel, in a pretty oddball comic here. Back in the late 40s, Shazam fought against this dude named Spider-Man, no hyphen, who tied people up with plastic webbing. Shazam makes pretty quick work of him, honestly, and he's just never seen again. But because of the fact that he's named Spider-Man, I think deserves a spot on this list. I don't know, you think we're ever going to see a comeback of Spider-Man in a Shazam comic? Next up is Deacon Blackfire. I'm kind of breaking my rule here because they did bring him in the new 52 and one issue in Rebirth. But the actual main continuity modern era Deacon Blackfire that we were introduced to in the miniseries The Cult that was it. That was our only appearance of the dude. And until we got an alternate reality, New 52, we didn't see him again. So I still consider that to be a one-timer. And it's shocking how well he was received to have stayed dead all the way through that time. That's something you don't really see too much. Usually if DC or Marvel has a character that clearly works, they try to find a way to resurrect them. Well, Deacon Blackfire stayed dead, which is pretty cool. We gotta talk about this mutant named William. In Peter Parker Spider-Man 34, we're given a story of a mutant not dissimilar to Cyclops. He can't control his eyes optic blasting those around him. Only when he lays on his back are his eyes calm and non-threatening, but once he sits up, he can't open his eyes, it kills everyone around him. So, since birth, he was restricted to a bed and shackled so he couldn't get up. Obviously, he escapes and it's up to Spider-Man to save him, but it's a short, depressing story that leads to Spider-Man being unable to save not only innocence, but unable to save William. With him up and about and finally opening his eyes, he overuses his vision and it drains his life force, resulting in his death. We have never seen him since then. 
Next up is another one of these ones that could have been a character with some serious legs. This is Willie Wisher, Adventure Comics 443. The Seven Soldiers of Victory is a 40 superhero team, at the time second only to the JSA, that once crossed paths with what was potentially one of the most powerful villains ever. Basically, anything he could think of, he could manifest it. It's basically like an even more powerful Green Lantern with constructs. The team continues to battle all the things that he wishes up. Eventually, it just exhausts his imagination. Realizing his own ineptitude and the harm he is to humanity, he wishes himself out of existence and disappears just like that. Honestly, the, the power levels of this dude are so high. Can you imagine the damage he could do in comic books? And yet they wrote him off as quickly as they wrote him in. Next up is gonna be Purgatory, Paul Christian. When I was a kid, this four issue arc villain, I thought would be a great recurring villain and it just didn't happen. Kyle Rayner, Green Lantern, gives construct legs to an amputee in an act of kindness. Later, Paul's willpower wore off, causing his legs to disappear once again, but now, of course, he blamed Green Lantern for giving him the hope. During the next issue, which coincided with the Underworld Unleashed event, Neron, the demon, makes a deal with Paul that he can keep his legs if he kills Green Lantern. Eager to get revenge and keep his legs, he goes after Kyle, who eventually blasts him with the full force of his lantern, causing the power Neron gave him to wear off. Defeated by Green Lantern, Neron takes Purgatory's soul and he becomes a minion of hell. Does that sound like a character that was just getting started and totally could have come back cooler than ever? You bet, but it just never happened. Considering how Green Lantern was directly responsible for his damnation, I thought that would be an amazing Kyle Rayner villain, but he's just a one-timer. This next one's definitely gonna surprise you. The mutant leader from Frank Miller's Batman Returns. After Batman attacked the gang at their headquarters, the mutant leader called him a coward for using rubber bullets and for hiding in the Batmobile. This caused the Dark Knight to get out and fight the mutant leader despite Alfred's protests. He kicks Batman's butt. He goes to jail, the mayor tries to negotiate with him and actually gets murdered in the process. Batman gets a round two with him and is able to strategically beat him like Batman always does. Such a popular fan favorite villain right here. It's such a surprise that he just gets that one appearance and then that's it. Keeping it Batman villains for a sec, we gotta go with Bat Zaro. Does anyone else find it weird that the only thing Batzaro has been in to date was his first appearance storyline and a special? Seeing Batzaro and Bizarro together was comedy gold, and honestly, it needs to be like a buddy cop series or something. If anyone at DC is up to it, hell, maybe I'll write a fan fiction and submit it over to DC. This needs to happen. Taking a break from talking about Marvel or DC, we're gonna talk about Normal Man. This character was popular for exactly one year and then it's done. He got a miniseries, it even had an annual, but then that was it. Curtain called, we're all done. What? Great comic with a great storyline, art, and everything. Normal Man was the only normal person on a planet of super-powered people the planet was even named Levram, Marvel spelled backwards. Just this synopsis alone would be enough, I'd think, to keep the character around forever. But after his miniseries, he hasn't been seen from again. It's a bizarre fate for such a unique and creative IP. When are we gonna get more of him? When are we gonna get more of all these people? I guess time will tell. Some characters that I thought had been forgotten in time did in more recent years get reintroduced. I never thought I'd see the Batman villain Wrath again, and yet in Batman Confidential, we actually got a full arc once again for him. Maybe writers just haven't come back to these characters yet, but these are some of the ones that I definitely was left wondering where the heck are they? Why were they only used the once? What do you think should be added to this list? Let us know down below. And as always, keep on hunting. Make sure to come down to Sentiment Depot Antiques and Collectibles where I'm set up with all of my comics located at 238 West Delaware Ave, Pennington, New Jersey. Open every day except for Monday and Tuesday. 
Enjoy 10% off from Wednesday to Friday. See you there.